Yeah. And you're on. She's creating. Are you there? Hi, everyone. I'm Nan Simonson, and I want to welcome you to our February Lifestyle Medical Cooking Show. I am honoring Valentine's Day today, uh, even though it is on Sunday by reminding us that the best way we take care of others is by taking care of ourselves. I have a um, Facebook group, Aging Powerfully with Nan, and I have a newsletter I just sent out today reminding everybody that the most important person we start with is ourselves. So today I want to remind us that what we put in our bodies takes care of us, what we share with our family takes care of them. And one of the ways that we show everybody love is by starting with ourselves. So I have a recommendation before I show you anything that has to do with cooking. Here's a card. Oh, it's a Valentine's card. It says Nan. Oh my goodness, look how cute that is. It's two flamingos and it says, I love you. Happy Valentine's Day. What am I talking about? I want to suggest something, recommend something, advise you to do something. Give yourself a Valentine's card this month. Give yourself a card that gives you plenty of room to write and write down a list of all of the things you appreciate about yourself. Everything that stands out, everything that makes you unique, everything that makes you quirky and wonderful everything you love about yourself, and you leave everything else alone. And read that to yourself on Valentine's Day and through the rest of the month, and remind yourself how special you are. If you love yourself well enough, you'll have plenty to go around to love others with. That's my, um, I'll say my introductory um, talk as we relate it to food and food is love. So let's talk about a loving meal. There's nothing red here. I recently watched a um, cooking show and they, it was about favorite colors. And sometimes in a holiday, it's about favorite colors as well. I could have reds all over. Well, the only thing that has any red in it is our dessert, but I'm talking more about the loving the food that loves you back. With recipes for longevity, which is what we entitle our recipes. Ooh, speaking of which, when you got your recipes and every one of you should have gotten a reminder, well, hopefully every one of you, and sometimes if you're too new, you're not on the list yet, but you're here, so you must have gotten the um, invitation. And when you get the invitation, if you scroll down to the bottom, you see, photos of what we're going to have, and then you click recipes, and you get the recipes. If you print it, it looks something like this. Well, I made an error, and that is that I had the photograph for the main dish of the main dish we had last time, the portobello pot roast, which was worth repeating, <laughs> but it's not accurate. Today, we're going to have a wonderful Chef AJ recipe. It's one of the easiest meals you could ever make. So this is taking care of you, the cook, and taking care of the family because it's so yummy. And it's so versatile that when I'm putting it together, you'll hear more about my description of what versatility means in a recipe. It's a basic, terrific chili that's made of black beans and mushrooms and a lot of seasonings and I throw in other things to make it special. I'm going to get this thing going right now. All right. It's this easy. I have an electro uh, Instapot. If you don't have an Instapot, you'll do this on the stove. You'll saute the vegetables on the stove. What I've done is on the Instapot, there's a saute button. I saute the chopped onion and the carrot in advance to brown them. And you don't have to do this. You could throw them all in without browning them. The browning caramelizes. The caramelization gives additional flavor. Why not have additional flavor? So I had a little more than three cups of onion. I had two nice big onions, and that's a little more than three cups. I had a couple of 
big chunky carrots I cut up into chunks and this is how easy this is. I, if you have your recipe, you can look at it, but without it, you'll be able to get the recipe. It's also on my website if you don't find it somewhere else, nansimmonson.com recipes, and you'll find it there. And the next thing I'm throwing in is two pounds of sliced mushrooms. Well, you can buy mushrooms, and actually, I've done, I've worked with the mushrooms that I've gotten at Costco that you buy, the um, baby um, portobello, those are wonderful, but you buy them whole. I use stems and all, wash them by dampening a paper towel and just getting off any of the um, mushroom growing medium in there, and they're organic, and I'm happy about that. Well, this is awfully easy, too. That's a pound and a half, and so you get a couple of containers, and you you um, put in two pounds. Well, how many ounces is two pounds? 16 ounces a pound, two, ounce, uh, two pounds, 32 ounces. Well, Trader Joe sells bagged, sliced, washed mushrooms and 10 ounce packages. And I decided three packages was enough. So we're two ounces short. So I'm throwing in the mushrooms this easy. And they're not that expensive. This is going to make enough food for, well, an army. And when I make this, it's just my husband and I here, uh, or my husband and me. And I still make this big quantity because what I want is food for the freezer. I call it my library. I'll go into the library, pull out a container. Oh, African um, peanut uh, stew or lentil soup or black bean mushroom chili, and that's a meal for the night. You can defrost it in your microwave. If, and, oh, some people say, I don't trust the microwave. I trust Michael Greger, and he trusts the microwave. Um, so I use my microwave, not so much to cook, but to defrost. Then I'm putting in two cans of um, fire-roasted diced tomatoes, and both of these have organic green chilies. Well, this is a, a Mexican-inspired meal or a Southwest-inspired meal. Chilies go all in for that. So this one is from Trader Joe's. Let's look at the consistency. Mm, nice and chunky, a lot of tomato in there. And this one is one of the most trusted brands there is, the Glen or the Mir Glen of Organic. They both were organic. Diced tomato, fire roasted, medium green chilies. I don't know. Maybe there's a few more tomatoes in there, but I don't know about that. So I think at, what was it, 99 cents for Trader Joe's can instead of $2.50 or 60 cents for the Mir Glen, Trader Joe's comes in pretty well. And then I use three cans. I'm sorry, I'm going to fish one out. I meant to leave it out for you. Three cans of organic black beans, not drained. Um, and if you're sensitive, uh, the recommendation is that you buy them salt-free. If you can't find them salt-free at a good price, you can rinse the, the um, broth off and then just put more broth in here. I just use them the way they were. All right. So I have three 15 ounces, that 16 ounce cans of black beans, 15.5 ounces. And then I have eight tablespoons of garlic. I was supposed to saute it with the onion, but don't tell anybody. I'm gonna throw that in raw because this is going to pressure cook and it's going to be fine. I kind of can't wreck this. And then I have well, I'll tell you about this in a minute. And then if you look at your recipe sheet, if you have it, otherwise I'm just telling you, and again, you can find the recipe online, either by looking at the lifestyle medical reminder you got or by um, uh, getting it off my recipes. But I'm throwing in cumin, uh, smoky paprika, oregano, um, chili powder, yum, 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 yum. And then I'm adding, as I said on the recipe, you could possibly add a couple of um, 
chipotle and adobo you buy it in a can it's a very smoky flavored chili i pulled off a couple of chilies from my bushes outside um, jalapenos i'm throwing those in because if i'm going to make this i'm going to make it the way we like it and we like spice and we like heat so i'm mixing all of this up it looks awfully dry i'm going to put in a cup and a half of broth see what it looks like Keep in mind that mushrooms, if you've ever cooked mushrooms, they weep. They're filled with moisture. I put in, in this recipe, because this was the base recipe, I put in a little more water because I like a little bit of a brothy. I'm putting in about three quarter, quarters of a cup more um, broth. And you've probably seen this if you've seen my cooking shows. I make my own broth out of veggies that I store in the freezer, stems of parsley or the entire bunch if it's getting a little wilted. Um, gosh, pieces of just about any vegetable that you have on hand that is either old or stems in pieces, like even the ribs and the seeds of bell peppers, bottoms of um, the fibrous bottoms of asparagus. I mean, just on and on. Some people even use the, and I won't use too much because I don't want it to be too cabbagey, but like the leaves of broccoli and especially the leaves of cauliflower, they're delicious. Um, okay, I'm going to show you this. It kind of looks like it's not going to be moist enough. Look, look, look. Yum, 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 yum. But you're going to see once it's cooked. Now I've added that additional um, broth. It, the recipe says one and a half cups, and I think I hit about two and a quarter cups. All right. Put on the cover. If you've got an instant pot, remember your, your lid fits. Oh, you can't see this. Let me turn you. I'm going to be turning you a bit today. There you go. Because we're shifting positions. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay. And putting it on backwards. Let me come around. Oh, I'm completely backwards. Okay. There we go. I love that sound. What? Are, it looks like I've forgotten something. I haven't. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Pressure cook for six minutes, people. Six minutes. Now, that doesn't take, mean that this takes six minutes to cook. It takes a while just to come up to pressure. With this particular one, this is my eight quart. I also have the um, six quart. There, it talks to me. It says, okay, I hear you. I'm ready. I'm on. My smaller one, I have to push start. All right, why have I left out the corn? Well, in the large one, I could have added the corn. In the smaller one, the six quart, it would have been too difficult to get all this in there. I like adding the corn at the very end, which is the recommendation if you're using the larger one, because I want the corn to still have some of its um, texture. And that's why I do it. So we're going to let this do its thing. I don't even know. I think it will be. If it will be completely finished by the time we finish, um, I don't know. But I'll still show you what's going on with it anyway. And um, anyway, on my website, the, the photo of the finished product is actually on there. So what is the second part of this meal? And why am I saying this is the food that loves you back? Legumes is one of the basics of a whole food plant-based dietary nutritional plan. A lot of lifestyle medical patients are whole food plant-based. Some exclusive, some partially, and some eh, not so much. But the more vegetables you eat, the more fruit, legumes, grains, seeds, and nuts, Spices and herbs, I shouldn't say the more seeds and nuts that you eat. You have to do that in moderation because those are the things that are so good that you could overdo it. But the more of our vegetable-based or plant-based foods we eat, the happier our microbiome, the healthier we are. 
The more our skin glows, the more we feel great, the more our cholesterol goes down, the more our blood pressure goes down. Honestly, it's the way it works. I celebrated my 70th birthday. I've been plant-based going on three years now, and I've never felt better. Let's switch places, and we're going to talk about our next meal. This is going to do its thing very quietly and happily, and we'll get to that when it's done. So I'm going to bring you over here, and there we go. There. This is, and I'm not sure how well... Uh, you may, I may be cut off because I don't have my, we had a little bit of a technical thing going on and, um, my tripod, which would have gotten everything, um, wasn't useful in this situation. So you've seen what I look like. Just watch what I'm doing. I have a eggplant that looked like this. Bought it at Trader Joe's for $1.39. You can get eggplant anywhere, a medium eggplant that is going to be our side dish to this meal. I, to save time, had the heat at medium high, had the eggplant sliced in half and put them on the pan. And I kind of touched them where when I lifted it up, I could see they hadn't browned well, just to kind of push them into the heat. This is a scan pan, which is a manufacturer in Denmark that is a non-stick surface, but it's a titanium ceramic. There are the safer non-Teflon non-stick pans that are great to use. And I just had this on medium high, browned the eggplant, and I'm gonna, it's cool enough for me to touch, but I've done this all in one step. Um, and you can still handle them just fine when they are, um, when you're you're taking them right off the fire. I'm gonna move the pan, I'll be right back. Okay. So now I'm gonna score the eggplants. Nice sharp knife. I'm scoring into them because I'm gonna spread a sauce on them that I want to sink in a bit. And because this looks really pretty when it's finished. Okay. There you go. See, I've just created pockets. This recipe is for, or requires, or requests, or <laughs> asks for, two eggplants. But I'm not doing two eggplants because that was just too much. And we're not feeding a crowd. And you just needed to see one eggplant. And one eggplant gives you two portions. My husband and I will eat this entire eggplant. Once we had it and we only ate a half, but most of the time we eat the whole thing. Tim told me, that's his name, that he doesn't like eggplant. But once he had this, he suddenly likes eggplant. Oh, I can watch my, I'm watching my hands, very Italian, which I am. So nothing happens without the hands moving. What I'm adding to this, this is such a simple sauce. What I'm adding to this is tamari, which is a Japanese soy sauce that's gluten-free. The Chinese usually use wheat, and their soy sauce has gluten, and the Japanese don't. Um, this one is an organic one. This uh, brand, Jan uh, Sanjay, has um, organic and non-organic um, tamari, and I believe it's all gluten-free. I'm using crunchy peanut butter. You could use any nut butter. I really like the flavor of the peanuts. I did it with almond butter, and I've done it with a product that I've come to like a lot called Nutso, uh, which is a combination of a number of nuts, cashews and hazelnuts and Brazil nuts, I believe. Um, and it's really good, but I, I like it with the peanuts, the peanut butter best. So if you're not familiar with this, you're going to say to yourself, Nan, I'm not spending, this is about $5, $5 to get one tablespoon of miso for this recipe. If you do a lot of plant-based cooking, you'll find that a lot of chefs, a lot of cooks will use miso as a flavoring, as an umami. Umami meaning that it has that deep uh, kind of a, well, umami is a descriptive. Um, 
savory, uh, but savory in, in kind of an unusual way. So this is what we call miso. It's fermented soy. It actually is as probiotic properties. It, it has the value of soy, and soy is a um, very nutritious food. Uh, it also has some protein, but it's you're not eating it for the protein, not when you're eating it in one teaspoon size um, measures. But I keep this on hand. It'll last a year in your refrigerator. It's really, uh, it has a lot of flavor. I use it in the salad dressing that I make. Um, I use it in a number of things. Okay, so I mixed uh, a tablespoon of the um, miso, tablespoon of peanut butter, a tablespoon. The recipe called for a tablespoon of um, maple syrup. Oops. Of maple syrup, but I prefer to use an even less processed food than that, and so I use date paste. I make my own date paste. If you don't have a recipe for it, again, go to nansimmonson.com, recipes, and you'll see a date paste under sauces and dressings and under desserts because I have a dessert and actually maybe several desserts that use date paste uh, as a sugar substitute. I don't use sugar at all. I use, and you're going to notice there's no oil in any of these. It doesn't mean there's no fat. Uh, peanut butter has fat. Um, I eat fat because I eat peanuts. I eat to, uh, tahini on salad dressings, but I don't use uh, added oils. They're processed, and I'm perfectly happy with my food without the oils. All those omega-6s that kind of throw off the balance of omega-3s and omega-6s. And I don't use them because... If I'm going to have 100 calories in something that big that doesn't fill up my stomach, I'd rather have, gosh, a pound of broccoli <laughs> for that 100 calories. Okay, so this is what this looks like. I lined a, um, I lined a baking sheet with a piece of um, parchment paper. It just makes it easier. I'm going to lay these down, and you'll see I had leftover but remember what I said this was the recipe was for four and I did add a little bit of chili oh where's my camera uh, chili flakes to it because again as I said we like heat and these are more um, I was gonna say wobbly I'll just say more cooked than they normally would have been I heated them pretty much in advance so they did a little bit of cooking so the recipe calls for 25 minutes of cooking I could do it less now um, but I really like the color that they take on when they've been um, cooked for the 25 minutes let me take you over here I'm going to put them in the oven for 25 minutes and in the meantime I'm going to show you some other things if this meal, sorry for all this adjusting, are we okay? If this meal is, has a Southwest flair or Mexican flair, the chili and the, the, um, the, the flavorings that we used, um, I'm going to add something that I don't even have a recipe for because I don't think it's needed. And that is a snack that is not only delicious and nutritious, but also very easy. I'm going to walk over and grab my knife. Okay. And what I'm talking about is jicama. When I store my jicama, I put it in my vegetable bin in the refrigerator in parchment paper because I've noticed if it is completely unwrapped, it tends to dry out a lot. If it's overly wrapped, for example, a plastic wrap, it gets soft. You wouldn't think so because it's, it has the firm consistency of a potato and, and yet it'll still get kind of a, um, a, a slick feel, kind of a, 
anyway, it starts going bad. So I've noticed that if I just wrap it in parchment paper and I put a rubber band around it, it is, um, it stays better and it stays actually quite well. So this is when I bought my jicama, oh gosh, last year from a local store. And if you have vegetable, fruit and vegetable stands near you. See, I take things for granted. Uh, we have a stand, and I'll finish that sentence as soon as I say this other thing. We have a stand near us called the Corona Family Farms, and it's always open, giant tent, produce picked every morning, not used the next day. And I said, gosh, do you throw those away? Well, no, they use them in their own compost. People come who have farmyard animals for those animals. Um, there, nothing is wasted, but their produce is wonderful. So even when the pandemic began, we all had to mask up and only so many people in the giant tent, but uh, it was great to go there for vegetables. It's mainly vegetables. The fruit is strawberries. They've been offering strawberries almost every week since the last crop last February. And now we've got new crops happening. Uh, well, one of the things she said to me when we were talking about jicama, she said, you know, you have to, um, she didn't say you had to, she said a great idea is to soak it. And they don't sell jicama, so I didn't have any to soak. But there's another store near me called Fruit Man. And it's, I live in Riverside, California, and it's a little place, but boy, is it fun because they hit the LA Veg Mart. Uh, several times a week and they pick up what looks good and their jicama, oh, oh, this smells wonderful. Uh, it's, it's very earthy. Their, their jicama is, is terrific and I bought this there and she said the same thing. Nan, and, and she's Hispanic and this is a very traditional uh, treatment, what you're going to see me do. Uh, for jicama and it's a favored food. So cut, watch yourself when you cut it. You don't want to use a knife that's going to slip and take off body parts. And then you can peel back the skin and it comes off pretty easily. I can tell this one's going to be wonderful and the reason I'm bringing up the soaking is that's what I did. I brought it home. I took off part of the top Part of the bottom to flatten it, put it in a bowl, and I actually left it in that bowl for four or five hours. I don't know that it was necessary to go that long, but I just happened to be doing other things, and there it sat. And they said it plumps up. Well, I can see what happens when I put things in water. When I buy my cilantro, for example, um, let me show you something. Sorry for the blank screen. But at the Corona Family Farms, I buy fresh parsley and fresh cilantro, and I put it in water, and it stays like this. So I have a little bouquet, green bouquet, in my refrigerator all week long. I wash it and dry it well. I even put it in a spinner uh, in the bunch um, so that I can, at will, chop some off, cut it up, and use it fresh. These things, herbs, um, uh, spices, they add tremendously to your phytonutrients and to your antioxidants because they have even stronger flavors than most fruits and vegetables that we eat. So that's jicama, and it's J-I-C-A-M-A. -A. I'll decorate it with it here. I'll put it right there. All right. And then... I'm just going to cut bits. I have a huge salad every day for lunch. Chopped salad with five different kinds of greens, arugula, kale, spring herbs, um, spinach, and somebody had lamb's quarters. Was it lamb's quarters or dandelion? It might have been dandelion at the um, farm store and I've been putting that in chop 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 that much becomes that much I have a, a video on my website showing how that all works and what it looks like 
when I create that salad. Chop it down, fill a plate, and then decorate it with a lot of different um, vegetables and leftovers, um, and that becomes lunch. Well, I almost always use ikama if I have it on hand because it's a resistant starch. And if you listen to Dr. Furman, for example, jicama is one of the best resistant starches. It's a marvelous starchy, kind of semi-sweet, semi-starchy flavor. And, mm, oh my gosh, this is a good one. Sometimes, I can't talk my mouth open. Um, or chew with my mouth open. Sometimes they can be a little overly starchy, and I don't know if it's because I soaked it or if I, or if it was just because I chose a good one. But this was wonderful. All right, and so this gets put out. This little dish. Now, what I'm using happens to be from Trader Joe's. Some of you are thinking, "Nan, enough with Trader Joe's." Well, it's three minutes from my home. The prices are great. Organic as opposed to non-organic is maybe 50 cents more. I was talking to a patient today on a group call, and she was saying that now nah, it's a little problematic to get organic food. It's almost twice as expensive. And I take for granted that we have these avail uh, available. I, I had to stop and think about that. These available resources, Trader Joe's has organic that is not uh, overly expensive. It's barely more expensive. But this is one of their products, a chili lime seasoning blend. And it's chili, pepper, and lime juice. And anyway, just delicious. So this is what this looks like. And you just put it on a table. You can put more or less of it. The chili, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put more. Because I'll have some of this at the end. Not in front of you, but when we're all gone. Or when we're all done. But this will be part of our meal. Okay. So, I'm going to make some dessert. Uh, let me see how this looks. Oh, it's looking marvelous. All right. So what are we going to do for dessert? Oh, I want to show you something. We have some time to kill because I'm waiting for these things to cook because our dessert is going to take moments, simply moments. All right. This, the garlic that I put in here, hold on. Okay. Sometimes when this takes a while, I worry, I think, gosh, what if it died and I don't know it and I'm waiting and nothing's going to happen. Well, so I put my ear down and I can hear it doing its thing. It's cooking away. It's boiling away. What's going to happen if you don't have an Instant Pot or if you're considering getting one is that I was going to say, tell me when this happens, but I don't think I could hear you. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to make a sound. Well, I'll know that. And then it's going to start cutting, uh, cut, cooking, hmm. counting down six minutes. And then I can release pressure at that time, add the corn, put it back on, or um, that's probably what I'll do. Not put it back on, but just put in the corn and I think we'll be done. Because by then I think it'll be time. Okay, so the recipe included eight cloves of garlic. That's a lot of garlic, but this is a lot of food. I'm filling up. I don't know if you saw how much this was. I'm going to say this is about six quarts. Um, and you get a lot of food from that uh, when you're putting it into containers or serving it um, in portions of, let's say, two and a half to three cups of, of portion. You may not eat that much, but, but we do. Um, but eight cloves of garlic is a lot, and you may be thinking, I don't even want to deal with that. Where is my, hold on just a sec. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I've shown you this before. If you're new to this, the Lifestyle Medical Cooking Show, then you may not have seen it. So I'm just going to show you again. But I don't know that I've shown you this. This simple little thing, and you can get one on Amazon. I looked. I think it's called garlic roller um, or garlic peeler. It's, I was at some kind of a, a food fair, uh, um, or whatever it was, gourmet food fair or just plain food fair, and, and I saw this, and I like it a lot. So I have this 
Where's my piece of garlic? Oh. oh, there it is. Okay, this big clove of garlic. I got this at our local, it's like Sprouts, but it's called Clark's. And they're organic, and I like the, the big, big pieces because it's easy to work with, especially when I'm doing this, as opposed to the tiny ones. And put it in this thing and simply roll. You can hear it crunch, crunch, crunch. What it's doing is it's rolling off it's dry paper. All right. When I turn it out, can you see what I have? I have peeled garlic, which is pretty pretty nifty. Um, all right. And then one more. Can you hear? And then there. See? Isn't that nifty? Well, probably what six five fifteen and we were starting at six I realized I hadn't done my garlic so and eight cloves all the chopping and I thought I'm not doing it any other way than this way and so I'll I got it all done for you but I wanted to show you because you could use some easy tips and this can go in the dishwasher but it's easy to just cup your hand put a little soap and squish it up and then store it handy little thing and then I put in 15 cloves, these big giant guys in here, rather than trying to chop it any other way. And see, I put these in, but this is already chopped and these will chop unevenly if that's the case, unless I completely like macerate the thing. And did that a few times. And, and some of you are thinking, what is that? It's called the... Uh, it's a Tupperware um, mini chopper. And they even have it on Amazon. But they have it from Tupperware people. And the blades, it's a triple blade gadget. But look at that. And so this all goes into a jar. This cute little jar. And um, a teaspoon of chopped garlic is one clove. So it doesn't matter that my cloves are elephantile. <laughs> I still will get, out of a teaspoon, a clove of garlic. So that's a handy thing to have and a handy thing to do. All right, so now let's start talking about our dessert. What we're going to be doing for dessert takes moments. And even though we could have served it immediately, we'll wait until the rest of the meal is done. How is this going? Okay. And we are going to be using food processor. This one is a Cuisinart. And um, you know what? I like many, many brands and many, many um, iterations of the same thing. A food processor is a food processor. But I gotta tell you something, there's one I would never use again, and so I'm gonna warn you. It's the Ninja food processor, and maybe, oh, I think it's just a, yeah, it's hitting pressure, yay. And maybe it's because I wasn't used to it, but one of the first cooking classes, some of you who are on, if Barb's on, she remembers, if Linda and Tom or Barbara Mack are on, they remember. Um, the Ninja, instead of having this kind of a blade where you can get in there with a spatula and you're pretty safe, you know, uh, pushing things down on the side, had this and then another set of blades right about here. Well, I, I saw it, but I didn't pay attention to it. And so I took a spatula and went like this, sliced my thumb wide open. Um, so... I don't think it's, oh, and so I called the company and asked if they had, oh, actually I Googled it, and asked and looked up whether or not there were complaints about it, and when I looked, there were like 58 uh, complaints about people cutting themselves with it, so don't get the Ninja. The Cuisinart's a really good one, and there are a number of others that are pretty good. I, I'm, I just happen to prefer this because I've always used it. So what are we going to have? We're going to have 
a cherry chocolate nice cream. Grab this. And I'm calling it nice cream. A lot of the uh, contemporary great um, whole food plant-based chefs, Chef AJ, Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook, uh, call ice cream that is not dairy nice cream because it's very good for your system. Oh, I know what I didn't finish. So what about the, the um, chili is going to love you back while you're loving it? You have legumes. The legumes are one of the foundational items, not necessarily for everyone. Some people can't have legumes, uh, but it's one of the foundational items in terms of nutrition on a plant-based diet. We were talking about that at our group meeting today. That's one of the nice things about Lifestyle Medical. There are multiple times during the week that you can connect, and it's all part of the program, one for um, uh, meditation and, and sleep and relaxation ideas, another accountability group, which I run. Another is our um, dietary group run by a, a dietitian. Another is run by a, a, um, a social worker, and um, their group has, uh, it's, it's like an accountability. I have to come in with this, there but in, in a slightly different style. I, patients today were talking about how much they really appreciate all of that. Anyway, um, so one of the things that somebody was saying was that, um, oh shoot, I've lost my train of thought. Um, hmm. I can't remember what I was saying, and you can't talk to me and remind me. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, whole food plant-based, and some people can't have certain things, but one of the things that's important to remember about whole food plant-based is that you want to eat all the colors of the rainbow as often as you can. You want a wide variety of legumes. Black beans are loaded with the additional nutrition. Uh, Dr. Dyson was on today, and he said that's his favorite beans, the black bean. It's got the additional nutrition because of that additional rich color. Um, you have pinto beans, garbanzo beans. I just shot a video, and it's on my website, for making garbanzo beans, uh, bulk cooking garbanzo beans, that you can then put in your freezer. Let me show you something. This is how, and actually I'll have to go in here anyway. This is how I store my own garbanzo beans. See that? I make in the Instant Pot two pounds of garbanzo beans and then drain them, keep the aquafaba because I use that for soups and um, it's very brothy and it's delicious and I, on the recipe I give you ideas of what goes into it. And then these can simply be pulled out, defrosted, put on salads or soups or stews. So instead of always buying canned beans, you can make your own. Can you put those? My husband just walked out and thought he was going to get away with walking by and not doing anything. And so I'm working him. All right. Um, so we want the foods that love us back, that have color, that have nutritional value, and as importantly, have fiber and whole foods, uh, as opposed to manufactured foods, plant-based, all plants have fiber, love to take care of us in that way. Okay, so we have our nice cream, and this is so healthy, and yet it's something that is so delicious. We're starting off with bananas, and the bananas will have cherries mixed in, and some chocolate chips mixed in, vanilla extract mixed in, and I'm gonna walk away and grab the bananas. I had to keep them in the freezer. All right. And we have four medium bananas. Get them nice and ripe. And 
I cut them in half and put them in Ziploc bags. And what I'm doing is I'm going to cut them into one inch pieces. Now here's something that's interesting. And so this is a, a recommendation to you. I put these in the freezer at two o'clock or was it one this afternoon? Guess what? They're not hard frozen. Um, that's why the knife is going through them so easily, but it goes through bananas pretty easily anyway. You want them cut into one inch pieces. And we're going to add the cherries, but I'm going to, I'm going to put the vanilla in just a teaspoon. And I was going to say, even the vanilla is organic. And you might think, gosh, Nan, why are you so hung up on that? It's only because the restrictions that um, are in place that allow something to be called organic require that pesticides and herbicides uh, of the most virulent kind are not used, cannot be used, nor is uh, can the food be genetically modified. And a lot of people wonder why that even matters. Well, if something's genetically modified, a lot of the modification isn't just um, like hybridiz hybridization where you just get a different strain. A lot of it is allows for the application of herbicides over the top of the plant to kill weeds underneath or to desiccate, that means dry out, for example, oat. Oat is heavily sprayed with um, glyphosate or desiccants that dry out the wheat so that it is, yay, six minutes down, uh, so that it can harvest better and, and they don't have as much trouble of fungus. Well, Roundup, the desiccant, is an antibiotic that totally messes up your microbiome. So for that reason, I really like to stay away from the um, from the the foods that aren't organic. However, if you said to me, "Well, man, does that mean if it's not organic, you're not going to eat it?" Uh, no, it doesn't. If I have to, if the only way I can get fruits and vegetables is any way I can get fruits and vegetables, organic or not, they're going to be eaten. Just wash them well. Okay, so I've put in a teaspoon of uh, vanilla extract. I have four frozen, not quite, bananas, a cup of frozen cherries, and I'm going to throw these back in because I don't want them to do the cross. And you're going to see how easily this blends. And I'm not going to put chocolate in until near the end and just break it up a little bit and then do we have this in i'm not used to working at it from this angle oh hold on i have to turn it toward me there all right the pieces of cherry in there. And I'm going to stir down the banana a little bit. This smells, oh my gosh, this looks, we don't need that anyway. That was just the plunger and we're not plunging anything. Okay. Here we go again. Sorry about the sound. A lot of times if you're on a Zoom meeting, it actually quiets the sound for you, but this doesn't do that. All right. 
I think it's about as chopped up as I want it to be. I'm going to grab a pretty bowl to put it in. And I'm going to add a tablespoon, oh, let's make it two tablespoons, of chocolate chips. Now, these are vegan, which means they're dairy-free, organic, <laughs> which means it's not sprayed, gluten-free. I don't know why there would be gluten in cocoa, but what happens sometimes is it just means that it's not processed in a facility that um, processes wheat or barley or any of the other gluten, uh, glutinous uh, grains. Can you hear the chocolate? All right. So if we were about to serve this, let me show you what would happen, what this looks like. Look. Look at this. This looks just like soft serve ice cream. Oh, I wish you could smell it. It, it has this rich cherry vanilla flavor, or I don't know about the flavor, but actually I do because I've eaten it. I'm gonna put this in here, and we're gonna put it in the freezer and come back to it later. What happens in this short period of time is nothing, it just doesn't melt. What happens in the long run, because I will be putting this in a sealed container, and Marissa, yes, I'll bring some to the office tomorrow. <laughs> Marissa, hi Marissa, is on taking care of us tonight, making sure things go well. We were a little worried there for a minute, because we had a bit of technical difficulty. And here you go, people. Now, I saved, I don't know if you noticed that I did that. I'm going to put it on now and then I'll put it on when we're ready to serve it. But I saved one cherry <laughs> for the top. Look. Look how pretty that is. Yum, yum. Okay, this goes in the freezer. going to say is that if it goes into a container and it's in the freezer for any length of time, uh, 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 enough to, well, many hours, it's going to turn rather hard. Um, I'm going to show you. I'm sorry, I keep going back and forth. Things I want to show you. See, this is one that I made as a, um, as an example. Okay, and this is frozen in there, and you can see that it's rather hard, but it's still easy enough to serve um, onto a, into a, a plate or into a stemmed glass, but you know what, this is impossible for me to do this and not taste it. I have to. Hmm. Oh, yum. Yeah. So, you can make a lot. I only made two bananas worth, and I got this amount and the amount we had for dessert one night. Okay. So, did you hear that the, um, the uh, Instant Pot is finished cooking? Because we are, we are on a limited amount of time, I'm not going to let it sit for 10 minutes. I, I don't even know if that's advised. Let me see. Um, or give it a natural release. I'm just going to release it now. So sorry for the noise. If this, I'm going to speak closer to you. If this was under a counter, you would want to pull the counter, the pot out from under the counter because that amount of steam is not only hot, but it can ruin the bottom of your counter. And this is a perfect place for it. Um, I was watching one of Chef AJ's, and if you if you haven't watched her cooking shows, 
He's on every day, two and three times a day, interviewing very important people in the plant-based world, but he's also doing cooking shows or having people come on doing cooking shows. I will be on there in May, May 20th. Dr. Dysinger was with her at the end of December, and so she was interviewing him, and it was a wonderful interview. She has a cute little dragon head. That, I think it's Chef AJ. It's just a sweet little thing that diverts the, the steam forward uh, in whatever direction she wants, so that if somebody has a lot of cabinetry, it's not going to ruin the cabinetry. Okay, we are finished. Oh, yes. All right. So, here is our, I don't want this to slide off. Here is our eggplant. I'm going to put it in a serving bowl, even though I think it looks kind of rustic and nice, served on its baking dish. I'm going to put a sprig of parsley to make it look more attractive. There we go. Yep. And as soon as this quiets down, I'm going to show you our finished meal. Open up the bag of corn, and this corn I got from, guess who, Trader Joe's. Organic, super sweet cut corn. We are putting the entire one pound bag into the chili. So when I said it serves a lot, boy did I mean it. We'll be able to let it go in just a minute. Oh, along with, oh shoot, man. It wasn't, oh yes it was, okay. Oh, I'm so glad this reminded me to say this to you. Do you see how it's up to four now? What this means, and that L, I don't know what L stands for. Long overdue? <laughs> Lazy? I don't know. But when you see the L, it means it's counting backwards. For example, I do oat groats. Oat groats, two cups of rinsed oat groats, three cups of boiling water. Set it for six now, uh, for five minutes, and then let it go backwards for two hours. So I'll set it in the morning before we walk up the mountain, which is an hour, let it set another hour or a half or three hours, doesn't matter at that point. Open it up and I have perfectly done oat growth. So that's what that five is. And for just a second, it confused me and I was thinking that I was releasing pressure and hadn't even finished cooking. So what are we gonna serve with this wonderful meal? You already know that we have a snack of or a side dish of the jicama. I'm going to put out some chopped cilantro sliced spring onions, olives. They can be sliced or whole. It looks great to have a couple of olives right on top of your soup. I'm putting out salsa and chipotle. I'm sorry, and cholula, um, hot sauce, because people do different things with their, um, with their chilies. I had a, uh, some friends over for this meal and their, their, um, couple of fellows that are uh, quite, they're, they're foodies, and they were so thrilled. We had a big, uh, a, a big serving 
plate. It's a much bigger bowl than I'm going to serve it in to show it to you. And one of them, Steve, was so thrilled at being able to put a little bit of all these different flavors. I had a couple of salsas in different places on the bowl so he could savor the chili and that together. And that was cool. And I always put out with this um, steamed or you can wrap four or five in a piece of foil, put it on a low oven, uh, 300 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes, or I put them in the microwave with two plates, one, one plate up, the other plate on top of it, um, that steam them. But this brand, the Mi Rancho, is a, um, not only gluten-free, but it's an organic brand of corn, and corn and soy is so heavily genetically modified. I almost always go for organic when it comes to those. But what's neat about this particular uh, bag that I have, they have the regular corn tortillas, but these are, they're called thin credibles. They are one third the thickness of, of, well, I don't know if it's really one third the thickness, but it must be because one of their regular tortillas are 70 or 80 calories Three, you can have three of these at 30 calories each for 100 calories. So I always get these, and I'll have at least three of these <laughs> with my bowl of chili. And so having uh, tortillas on the side to either dip in or put some salsa. And the other thing I would always have is my um, tofu sour cream, the vegan sour cream that's on my website if you don't have that recipe from the times that I've shared it with you, uh, nansimmonson.com recipes. Okay, we can take this off now. Uh, wait until I show it to you. Put this on the side, get it out of the way. And now what am I doing? I'm adding an entire bag, one pound bag of corn that will heat up instantly. And you're thinking, but Nan isn't gonna cool off the um, the chili, um, barely, because this is pretty hot. Now, you know what I did last time I cooked this? I'm going to put, hold on, uh, cancel, and then saute. What I did last time is that I wanted to thicken it. Right now, it's, it, and you know what? I have never made this without adding a little extra broth, and... This is, it's the way I like a chili. It's kind of soupy. I wonder what it would be like if you wanted a chili that was much less soupy. But what I've done the last couple of times is that I put it on saute so that it would heat it a lot, bubble it a bit, and thicken it because of the starch in it from the beans. It'll actually thicken and reduce some of the, the um, liquid in it and give it a richer flavor. But as it is, I'm going to carry this over to you. All right. We're about to serve it up, and we'll be ending earlier today. Are you getting nervous about all of this? Don't drop it now. Here, look. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, you can, somewhat. Anyway, um, it's a wonderful, rich, fabulous recipe. Uh, 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 hold on. Because you have onion, highly nourishing. Mushroom, highly nourishing. Uh, corn, tomatoes, uh, your vegetable broth. It has everything you want. Then you're stirring in greens from your cilantro or, cel uh, or um, parsley. If you don't like um, cilantro, some people, it's even genetic, don't like cilantro. They think it tastes soapy, and there is a genetic um, element to that. Uh, Tim and I have had this where we have chopped uh, spinach that we throw in just before we serve it. And that's lovely. And then we've added to the green um, because we always want more greens. But I'll show you how I would serve it. And I'm going to grab one other thing. 
if you are new to my cooking class, you're not familiar with what I always have on hand. And it is my uh, vegan tofu um, sour cream. It's, it's just lovely. A package of silken tofu, about three quarters of a teaspoon of onion powder and garlic powder, and two and a half tablespoons of lemon juice. Mm. And it's, it's delicious. And it's a little extra soy. It's a little extra protein. So, what we do is serve. Yeah, see, it's, I have it on saute, and it's bubbling away. So, you know what? Next time I make this, I'm going to try to go strictly by the recipe. Cup and a half of extra broth, except I like it like this. I don't want it to be too thick. So maybe I won't do that. I'm just talking to myself, aren't I? I'm going to turn this off because I'm going to have to cool this before I store it tonight. I'll be up all night cooling it. Not really. I think I'm just going to put a screen over it and put it in the garage because the garage is cool enough. Our nights are down to 40s now. And it'll be fine. So we have our beautiful mushroom chili. Let me do this. There you go. Yum, yum. And I'm going to put over it some green onion, cilantro, throw on a couple of olives, and a dollop, I'll even put that on the side, of vegan sour cream, which I actually prefer to regular sour cream. We have our eggplant, and look at this. What you're looking at here is a very, very tender, moist piece of eggplant with a beautiful, savory sauce, because when you add those ingredients together, tamari, peanut butter, miso, and a little sweetener from the date paste, you have this beautiful savory flavor. And then we want to cool down our mouth. With our ice cream. And Spoon it in. This is where we get our Valentine's red and bits of chocolate. And just pile it on. And bring that cherry right over there and put it on top. And look what you have. You have a lovely, <laughs> a lovely dessert. All right. Bon appetit. Do we have any questions, Marissa? So we had one earlier. Um, somebody was wanting to know where you bought your miso paste. Oh, um, you can get your miso. sprouts. They, they have it in a lot of stores. A lot of stores have a section where they have soy and they have um, tempeh, uh, um, tofu, and in that same section, they'll have miso. And again, it looks like this. It's refrigerated, so it's in a refrigerator section, just like your tofu or your tempeh would be. And there's a salad dressing uh, recipe on here. All of this is vegan. Um, that looks really nice. It's got a lot of honey, though. I won't call that vegan, but... It has a lot of honey. I would probably substitute the date paste and not make it quite so sweet. Um, but it is, uh, 
you'll find it adds a lot of flavor to a lot of things. I'll put it, when I'm sauteing mushrooms, I'll put a little bit of miso in the mushroom. Um, uh, as I'm sauteing first onion, then garlic, and then mushrooms. Again, when I saute, just like I did with the onions and um, carrot, there's no oil involved. It's in a hot pan, the, uh, the onions weep, tiny bit of broth if they start to stick and brown too much. And um, then I would add the miso and turn it around with the mushrooms. And it's, it's just delicious, really good. Uh, any other questions? No, it doesn't look like there's any other questions. Just thank you and everything looks delicious. Oh, good. I'm so glad you were here. I hope you enjoyed the class. I know I enjoyed showing you what you can do to take care of yourself and your family on Valentine's Day coming up this Sunday. Take really good care of yourself. Don't forget to write yourself a Valentine's card. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to hit the button or if... Um,